fear not of the one who can destroy your body, but fear the one who can destroy your soul. Jeremiah is my favorite of the Old Testament prophets. You ask why? Because he constantly got in trouble. All his life he was in trouble. Even though he came from a priestly family, and priestly families had it well back then, the 6th century in Jerusalem, he chose to speak as a free-standing prophet. He experienced in a very tangible way the reality of being called by God to lend his voice to God, to speak truth to power, and to lend his voice to those who otherwise were voiceless. And so we can imagine that nobody liked him. Not the kings, not the priests, not his compatriots, not the kings of Assyria, Egypt, and Babylon who were conquering Israel in his lifetime, not the generals of the Jewish army, and not the generals of the conquering armies. Every single person that Jeremiah came in contact with would eventually be fed up with his prophesying, with his repeating the same point over and over and over again. And you hear that sentiment in today's first reading. They are already plotting it against Jeremiah. They want to get rid of him because, goodness, how much can we listen to the same story? God loves all. You should worry about the sick and the widows and not plan a bigger army or build a bigger palace for the king. Jeremiah's message was not popular even though it could be considered populist. Instead of standing on the side of his priestly family, of the nobility of the 6th century Israel, instead of serving the status quo, he would consistently lend his voice to the widows, the poor, to the oppressed, to those that nobody was paying attention to. And for that reason, because he was so uncompromising in his ministry, all his life he suffered rejection, all his life he had many more enemies than friends and allies. Fear not of the one who can kill your body, but fear the one who can kill your soul. There were several attempts to assassinate Jeremiah in his lifetime. 
And if he had any common sense, he would have escaped. I bet his parents told him, you should escape. And yet, not even knowing these words from today's Gospel, Jeremiah did not fear those who could kill his body, but he was afraid for his own soul, for the integrity of what he was standing for. Over and over again, Jeremiah was choosing to be true to himself, to his mission, and to God, who called him to speak truth whenever it was necessary, convenient or not. In my life in this country, which soon will turn 20 years since I first stepped on American soil, more than once I felt like Jeremiah. More than once I felt like I had to choose between making people happy and killing my soul on my integrity. It all began, of course, in 2004, when the people of St. Stanislaus first reached out to me, asking for help. And even though my bishop in Springfield was originally quite supportive of my attempting to find a solution to this impasse, at the end, I was told, you should stay out of this big, messy situation. I was told, you have a career in front of you, you should think about that, not about a bunch of Polacks in St. Louis. And for some reason, back then in 2005, I immediately thought of Jeremiah, a young prophet who would refuse to compromise his ideals, who would refuse to sell himself to the status quo. And most of you know what happened after 2005 when all the manure hit the fan, when I was excommunicated, when for two or three weeks I had to wear a bulletproof vest because we were getting hate mail and hate messages, when then we were sued by the archdiocese, and it appears there has not been a single year in my ministry here at St. Stanislaus that there will be no drama or someone demanding that I stop being so edgy in my messages, in my position. Strangely enough, as you know very well, even some of our old members of the board of directors would eventually turn against me. I don't think if there were ever was a vote in my contract that was unanimous. There is always someone who says, Father, would you please stop talking about all this inclusivity about all these gay issues or women issues, 
about all the racial reconciliation. Can you just focus on the gospel for once, please? Well, I have been trying to focus on the gospel. But the gospel demands of me to always stand on the side of the oppressed and marginalized. The gospel demands of me like it demanded of Jeremiah to lend my voice to the voiceless, to speak truth to power, convenient or not. But you see, it's not only the job of a priest to do such things. I bet in your own life you were placed in a position when you had to choose whether to sell your soul and live peacefully, happily ever after or to stand up for something that you believe in. And when you find in yourself that courage to stand up for better or for worse, to speak your truth, to be a sign, to use biblical language, to be a sign of contradiction, you will end up like Jeremiah, and like Jesus, like St. Peter, and thousands of other women and men of faith. You see, the message of the gospel, the message of God's love is edgy. It is controversial. Being true to yourself will cost you if you have never had to pay the price for being true to yourself, it means that you have sold out perhaps one time too many. Truth is not cheap. Integrity is not cheap or easy. Keeping your soul intact is not cheap, easy, and smooth sailing. If a Christian person expects a smooth and travel-free life, she or he is deeply mistaken. Because if you remain true to your baptismal promises, if you remain true to the message of the gospel, you, like Jeremiah and like Jesus, will gain enemies. But fear not of those who can destroy your career, who can take away the roof above your head, who can turn your, peop your friends into your enemies, but fear those who can destroy your soul. Amen.